Any discussion of regenerative braking should begin with a brief explanation of kinetic energy. This from Wikipedia. In physics, the kinetic energy of an object is the energy that it possesses due to its motion. It is defined as the work needed to accelerate a body of a given mass from rest to its stated velocity. Having gained this energy during its acceleration, the body maintains this kinetic energy unless its speed changes. The same amount of work is done by a body in decelerating from its current speed to a state of rest. Represented as a mathematical equation, kinetic energy equals one-half mass times velocity squared, typically measured in joules. From your high school physics class, you may recall that energy cannot be destroyed. So what happens when the speed of an object of a given mass changes? How do we adapt to that? The object's kinetic energy must be transformed into something else. And it's this last observation that lies at the core of regenerative braking. But enough abstractions. Let's talk about a moving car. A moving car is a large object traveling at a given speed. It has a very large mass and can have significant velocity. So its kinetic energy is impressive. Any unfortunate soul who is backed into his roadside mailbox understands this from personal experience. How do we stop a conventional car? As I mentioned, as the car slows, its kinetic energy must be transformed into something else, another form of energy. First, you stop providing energy to the motor, thereby allowing air friction drag to slow the car. Next, you depress the brake pedal. Calipers press on discs and create friction that slows the rotation of the wheels. Energy is dissipated as heat. As braking occurs, a significant amount of heat is created. There is no easy way to recover this heat energy in a conventional automobile, and it is lost. For an ICE vehicle, 80% of the energy input to propel the car forward is lost to heat and other effects as the car is brought back to zero velocity. As an aside, some ICE vehicle manufacturers are also using regenerative braking systems to replace the alternator, which can sap as much as 10% of the energy output of an internal combustion engine. They store the electricity generated in a supercapacitor rather than a battery. That's a good thing to do, but the EV approach is considerably more interesting. For electric vehicles, braking can recapture as much as 40 to 50 percent of the vehicle's kinetic energy, but not if your disc brakes are used as the sole mechanism for slowing the car. Instead, Control Electronics recognizes that the power to the electric motor has been discontinued. That is, you picked your foot off the accelerator. It then initiates regenerative braking. To understand how regenerative braking happens, we have to relook at the, at the electric motor. As we discussed in an earlier EVU mini course, coils of copper wire run through a stack of thin steel plates and form something called a stator. The rotor is a steel shaft with copper bars running through it. It rotates and ultimately turns the wheels of the EV. But what makes the rotor rotate? The flow of alternating current into copper windings of the stator creates a magnetic field. Alternating current causes the field to vary between north and south appearing to move in a circular path. The rotor chases the magnetic field and rotates as a consequence. One more important point. The electric motor exhibits an interesting duality. It can be a motor 
or it can be a generator. Let's take a look at that. When an electric motor receives electrical energy as input, it converts the energy derived from the, an electromagnetic field into mechanical energy transmitted by the rotor. This provides torque, that is, rotational energy, that causes the drive wheels of a vehicle to rotate. Stated more succinctly, if input to a motor is electrical energy, output will be mechanical rotation or torque. But if the electric input stops and the mechanical rotation derived from kinetic energy is used as input, the motor becomes a generator and produces electrical energy as output. In the second part of this EBU mini course, we'll examine how these characteristics can be used to implement a regenerative braking system. We'll also look at some of the driving characteristics of a regen system.